this is a random thought. Not even a random thought, something I've been meditating on for probably ever since I found out I was gonna have a like daughter. And this is the thought. You know, whatever behaviors you exhibit, your kids are going to mimic in some way. Even if you don't want them to. Even if you say, hey, you are your own person, what you do is going to affect your child. If you operate out of your insecurities, your children will operate out of their insecurities. Whether that is you not properly discussing situations and having you know constructive conversations with people you have conflicts with, whether that is you saying that you know physical appearance is the only thing that matters in life, your kids will see that and mimic that. You know, of course, they usually come to a point where they can think for themselves, but Malcolm Gladwell has a book called Outliers, and the Outliers, he says, it takes 10,000 hours for someone to become an expert at something, okay? That's about two hours a day for every single day for two plus years. It's a lot of practice, right? Right. So, if you have lived in a household or you've been a part of a, a behavioral system where you have been trained to think negatively about yourself, Essentially, you become a professional in thinking that you are the worst person ever. You become a professional in thinking that I don't matter. You become a professional in thinking that if I don't say yes to everybody, no one's going to be there for me. You become a professional in being selfish. You become a professional in not standing up for yourself for 18 years because you know you're at home for that period, or maybe you leave home earlier. And then you have to spend, honestly, probably double the time breaking those patterns, okay? I say this because I've realized that I have become a professional with some very negative things. Not even realized. I've always known that I've become, you know, I, I have, my self-talk is not the best a lot of times, you know, and that hinders me from doing so much. And I'm just going to let you know as someone who's not an expert in anything, but someone who has watched tons of self-help videos and watched a lot of different, you know, sermons of pastors giving some practical advice. Whenever you face that thing that makes you insecure, whenever you face that thing that fills you full of fear, whenever it's in front of you and you're tempted and your body automatically wants to go into that negative behavior or that defense mechanism that isn't really helping you to like grow as a person. When you have the, the, the contrasting thought that says, maybe I can do something different, do that thing that's different. Do it. Do the thing that you're scared of doing. For example, I honestly believe I am a disappointment to so many people because in college and in high school in regards to me being a part of like organizations I showed so much potential and I believe I have that but I haven't fulfilled it because I follow carnal desires and I also was all about people pleasing instead of following what I knew I was good at so since I was you know addicted to people pleasing I couldn't become the person that I was. So right now, me even making this video is basically, I want to share with people a little part of my story and how I have been impacted by my own insecurities and haven't been successful and how I could have been if I didn't listen to what other people said about me so that you can look at your life and you can look at your own insecurities and realize that, you know what? I actually really am a good singer. I'm not, this is not for me. But for example, <laughs> I'm a great vocalist. And you know, as much as you know, some people have encouraged me, I've let 10 people in my life discourage me from actually pursuing that dream 100%. You know, I have this passion that people call a side hustle. And as much as my closest friends have said, one day that's going to be the thing that you're known for. I've let five people tell me that your passion is only a side hustle and will always be a side hustle. 
you know. Sometimes when people have, honestly, a lot of times when people have never been in the situation that you've been in, it's really hard for them to express sympathy or empathy, you know. And if you're a male specifically, it's very hard for males to express empathy or sympathy because we're not really brought up to express empathy or sympathy. We're taught to, you know, just push through. But if you're always pushing through and you have all these wounds and you're not tending to these wounds, you're just pushing through and you're patching these wounds with these defense mechanisms, which are basically just band-aids over bullet holes and you keep bleeding, you keep pushing through and then you end your life and you're sad, you're depressed and you're full of anxiety because you're hurt, you've never tended to those wounds, you don't believe anybody else will, so you don't talk about it and you keep going forward. And guess what? Since you've been doing it for more than 10,000 hours, you've become an expert (laughs) into acting like nothing's wrong when you're bleeding and you're dying slowly. And then you get in a long-term relationship and it sucks because guess what? You can't be healthy if you're bleeding. You can't have a healthy relationship if you're always bleeding. Same thing for females. I'm not a woman. So what can I really say, especially in today's age? I don't want to say anything that will offend a woman. I really don't ever want to say anything that will offend. Well, I guess I'll say this, if I'm being honest. You know, maybe as a woman, you have lived a life of people pleasing because you feel like, oh, I need to be this super girly girl. And you're not that, you know. And you are, you believe you're a 100% woman. But since you don't follow all the P's and Q's of your culture, you feel discouraged. And there are certain things that you want to do and still be 100% woman, but you're like, yo, I can't go to a boxing class because I'm a girl. I, that could be something. I don't know what you want to do, but you're just stopping yourself because of things other people have said about you. When there's always, not always actually, when there's usually people that God has put in your life or, you know, people who you just like happen to come upon who are really just like, hey, you can actually do this. There's a rule called the 70% rule. And basically it's like when you're 70% sure about something, you should go through with it. And that's because it's very, very rare that that you're 90% sure about something. So I just challenge you to take inventory of your life. Take inventory of all the things that you're insecure about and look at how they have caused you to limit your behaviors when it comes to you actually pursuing things that you love to do. And then find a passion project and find the one that you're closest to 100% on. But as soon as you hit 70 on one of those and the other ones are at like 69%, 65%, just go and do it. Now I'm saying this from the perspective of someone who loves music who wrote his first rap song when he was probably I don't even know like in third grade I wrote my first poem for a girl and I was like in kindergarten <laughs> you know and because I didn't go to music school and you know I didn't talk about it all the time I don't know, people don't really see me as an artist in that sense, you know? And some people even try to push back on it and put me in this category of, like, you should just work out. Like, they told LeBron, you should just shut up and dribble. For me, it's like, Ezra, just shut up and pick up the weight. It's like, I love lifting weights, but weights is therapy. Weights is therapy. What I really love is art. I love writing music. I love writing songs. I love acting. I love improv. I like performance. And the reason I love making videos is because when I was in college and when I was in high school and I worked camps and I met a child who grew up with a similar lifestyle as me or worse than me and I could say, hey, I've been through something similar and I made it out and I'm here. And I saw that they took that and then they did something amazing with it I'm like yo like why not spread love why not spread that care and that passion to people why not 
social media is so full of people who are always complaining. But when people complain, we're like, hey, awesome, 1,000 likes. And then for some reason, when people are positive and they are trying to encourage other people, you're like, what do you know? How can you encourage people? Look at your life. It's like, so I should just complain? So I should just feed the self-limiting beliefs that I have and let other people affirm those, that life is terrible? So if you've made it to the very end of this video, then I just want to say thank you and take inventory of your life, take inventory of your insecurities, how they've caused self-limiting beliefs, and start you know, listing some things that you've always wanted to do, see how those self-limiting beliefs and insecurities have held you back. And then whichever one is closest to 100% or if you can't get to 170% because the 70% rule, go after it and just stick to that one thing. Don't put your eggs in like 20 different baskets. I mean, you can have different baskets along the way, but focus on that and just really like aim on finishing it. And then also, extra note, when it comes to finishing goals, Jordan Peterson <laughs> Uh, who is a, I guess he's like a teacher slash like journalist. He has this like, like idea where he's like, people don't aim low enough. Basically, when you have a goal, you aim too high and you don't have that skill level yet or you haven't built up enough momentum so you don't reach it. So whatever goal you decide to pick, I want you to aim really, really, really low. For example, if it's to go to the gym and you want to lose like 15 pounds, Split up your goal into like tiers and make like the just the lowest tier for like a month is just to go to the gym. Not even to have a plan, just to go and stay there for, I don't know, it could be like five minutes. Or it could just be just to go to the gym and walk in the gym. Because then at least you can like, okay, I achieved. You can just do that every day. Then, you know, usually action leads to action, you know. Uh, what is it? Every, what is it, Newton's Law of Physics? Uh, uh, talks about, basically, yeah, action is going to lead to action. So, yeah, and then inaction leads to inaction. Uh, oh, an object in motion stays in motion. So, if you just start that motion, I assure you that eventually you are going to reach this point of just momentum and you'll get better and you'll get better and you'll get better and if you make your goals properly you're not shooting too high you're not shooting too low but it's like low enough that you can reach it and then slowly increase what your goal is you're going to make it to where you want to go but you gotta realize what those limiting beliefs are because if you don't you're going to be stopped and you're going to say, oh, I just don't have time, when really it's not that you don't have time. It's the fact that you're scared of your parents seeing the fact that you decided to, you know, I, I don't know, something like weird. It's like take ballet. I don't know what if you're a dude and you want to take ballet. I took a ballet class. I was trash. I was absolute donkey butt at ballet. I was really bad. Like, <laughs> woo. Talk about balance, huh? Pirouette. Here or not. Um, so <laughs> that was really bad. I was so, oof, uh, that, that was a short dream. Anyway, so, <laughs> so bad. I was so bad at ballet. Oh my gosh. Guys, if you want to do ballet, or women, if you want to play, you know, on a football league. I know a girl plays on a football league, you know? And yeah, she's Probably kills. I need to go to a game, but moving on. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. And peep and sometimes you'll have friends who you think are going to support you. But they've amassed so much success, they can't even envision what you're going through trying to push through. And sometimes people have been in such a blessed position that once again they haven't been through enough to be able to relate to someone in your position. You know? And that's okay. Everyone's not going to understand you, but this is your journey. So everything I'm saying 
take it with a grain of salt, but you have to own your journey. You have to own your life. Like, you got to own it. You have to. It's yours. Anyway, once again, thank you for watching this video and more to come. Why is there more to come? Because I used to do these back when I lived in Virginia, working at Liberty University. And I remember a couple times people came up to me like, yo, that was really motivational. And I was like, really? I didn't ask people to tell me that in person, but they did. And then I stopped because I had two people who were really close to me say something that was not even negative, but just a critique. And I was like, oh no, I should stop because <laughs> someone says something about what I'm doing. And one of the self-limiting beliefs I have to overcome is that just because someone says something doesn't mean you have to stop. Anyway, that's all. My name is Ezra. You are awesome. You are beautiful. We all have our flaws and our self-limiting beliefs. But once we find out what those are, we can pick them apart and conquer them if we take our time and we're committed to self-growth. Remember to always pray because... Humans look outside themselves for solutions for a reason, and I feel like that's because God is always saying, I'm here for you, bud. I don't know if God's out there saying bud, but hey, <laughs> that's what happened in my brain. Peace out. Much love. Jesus loves you too, so yeah, I just got to put that out.